Just three days after a mountain cabin burned down in Seven Oaks, California, the coroner's office has positively identified the body inside as that of ex-LAPD officer Christopher Dorner. While that mystery might have been solved, so many other questions remain about this case. Was the cabin a fire an accident or was it on purpose? How did everything really play out? And what took authorities so long to contact the fire department when it was on fire? Another important question is exactly how much money uh, and police resources were spent on finding this man. And that question is something authorities refuse to answer. So what we do know is that some 20 law enforcement agencies were involved that used helicopters, SWAT vehicles, protective details, and infrared scanners. But to talk more about this massive effort to find just one man, I'm joined now by journalist Max Blumenthal. Hey there, Max. Let's start off by talking about the money aspect of this. There's very little that we actually know in terms of hard numbers. Uh, what do you know about, about the type of money that was spent on this project? I know nothing about the money that was spent on the project. I'm I was looking at how the uh, standoff ended, and uh, it appears that there was a multi-department involvement. Um, in addition to listening to police scanners from San Bernardino County, I was listening to uh, from San Bernardino County sheriffs. I was listening to San Bernardino County police and Inland Empire police in Southern California and uh, many of them were deployed to the scene. So this was expensive, uh, an expensive operation clearly that involved uh, multiple departments as well as the federal government. The FBI was involved and U.S. Marshals were heavily involved. Now, we, uh, like I said earlier, we listed a bunch of things that we know that they were using. Anybody that was really watching the coverage of this could tell you the things that we know. But why isn't the law enforcement making this type of money, the resources, this information uh, public? Why aren't they making it available? I'm not really interested right now in uh, whether uh, uh, in the, uh, the resources or the, the, the money that was used because we still haven't um, gotten admissions from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department that they started the fire that burned Chris Dorner alive and that they intended to do so. Um, leaked audio transmissions that I was listening to clearly indicate that they planned to burn him alive or, as they said, uh, deploy the burner. Um, I, the, the audio transmissions of the police scanners also show that they carefully managed the fire to ensure that it would completely consume the cabin he was in, including the basement. Um, and I just found a buried CNN report, and I tweeted out the screenshot on my Twitter feed, which is just Max Blumenthal, um, that showing a quote, a quote from a U.S. Marshal spokesman to CNN's Brian Todd that the suspect tried to escape from the back of the cabin and was pushed back inside. That's the exact language. Pushed back inside could mean that they fired upon him. Okay, but there Max, appears to have been so no attempt at negotiation. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the amount of force that it was used uh, to uh, to get this man. Uh, was it too much, just enough, or too little? Well, um, prior to this standoff in Big Bear, the LAPD opened fire on a van filled with women delivering the LA Times. Um, so, you know, Dorner had killed a cop, and then he killed another cop at Big Bear, and I think the cops were acting emotionally and not professionally and were hell-bent on revenge, and this was clearly uh, shown in not just the police scanner transmissions, but in an open transmission that was broadcast on KCAL 9 during the standoff, in which two um, deputies were overheard screaming, uh, let's burn this mf -er burn the MF. They're referring to Dorner, the suspect, and that's what but, they uh, intended to do. Max, let me play devil's advocate here for just a minute. This man is not your average suspect, you know. First of all, he was highly trained. Secondly, he was uh, gunning for police officers and their families. And finally, his manifesto very much had a do-or-die mentality to it. Do these reasons justify the amount of resources and force that was uh, used on this man? I'm not going to justify anything Dorner did. He wasn't a hero. He was a killer. Um, but those who uh, believe that he that that he should be denied due process and that the uh, that this should this incident shouldn't be investigated, the police's behavior shouldn't be investigated. I consider them also to be villains. They're villains of democracy. Um, the police, the sheriff's department from San Bernardino County has persisted in its lie that it didn't start the fire uh, that consumed the cabin 
uh, where Chris Dorner is hiding. It is also, sources from the department have also lied to the Los Angeles Times and claimed there was a constant barrage of gunfire from inside the cabin, when in fact the only gunshot reported on police scanners was a single shot after the burners were deployed, which is probably Dorner killing himself. So if they're comfortable in their behavior and they think they acted professionally, the police, why are they lying about it? And why isn't the media doing a better job of investigating? Uh, all of those are interesting points. Uh, what we do know also, Max, is that both of the mayoral candidates that are uh, looking to run for the San Bernardino are, are pushing for an investigation, and, and it looks like that there will be one as to why that, uh, that uh, cabin actually burned down, the techniques that were used, and more specifically, the burners that were used to, to get that man out. I know a lot of people are comparing that to Waco, but let's, let's move. Let's, let's talk about um, the police departments overall. City budgets are tight uh, right now, obviously. I mean, the LAPD was pushing pennies just to get a couple of uh, 100 police officers uh, from not being laid off. But despite these tight budgets, it looks like uh, more and more high-tech tools are uh, entering law enforcement. Can you, can you talk about that? I mean, where is the money coming from for that? Yeah, the, the money from that is coming from the Pentagon, from the Defense Department, and it's a program that authorizes the Pentagon to give billions of dollars every year in surplus military gear to local police departments. So we've seen even small-town police departments um, being basically gifted or granted uh, amphibious tanks to use against the civilian population. Um, yesterday, the Alameda County Sheriff's Department held a, a press conference uh, about the introduction of drones, domestic surveillance drones, um, over the skies of Berkeley, California. So we're just seeing a, stead a steady graduation of uh, the militarization of American policing. Um, in, and, and, and what does this symbolize? It symbolizes... Uh, police culture that sees civilians not as neighbors but as all potential criminals and that's that's dangerous all very interesting in the wake of this Christopher Dorner case uh, journalist uh, Max Blumenthal thank you so much for joining us thanks for having me